Hello, my name is David Hasek. I'm the Director of Client Services here at Dominion Payroll. I'm going to be talking today about bonuses, distributions, and fringe benefits heading into year end. Let's cover the five W's first. Who are you going to contact? That would be us, Customer Service at Dominion Payroll. Your email would come into our help desk and we would handle it from there. Again, this is bonuses, distributions, and fringe benefits. When? As early as possible in December, but definitely by your last payroll in 2016. The last business day of the year is Friday, December 30th. Where? From the comfort of your office, living room, or anywhere else you have Wi-Fi access. And why? We want to make 2017 as drama-free as possible. So fringe benefits is a catch-all term to refer to all the different irregular type of compensation employees may receive. It's also sometimes reported as lump sums at the end of the calendar year. So some common fringe benefits include group term life, insurance premiums paid by the employer, personal use of a company car or an auto allowance, rent paid by the employer, tuition assistance, moving allowances, and gift cards or any other taxable compensation including cash. If you have any questions, you can definitely look up the IRS publication 15-B, and it includes all of the information you need regarding fringe benefits. So let's cover some of these in detail. The group term life is taxable to the employees if the following scenario is present. The policy covers the employee, and the value of the policy is greater than $50,000. It is actually the amount over $50,000 that is taxable. Uh, it also is taxable if the policy covers an employee's dependents and the value of that coverage is greater than $2,000. Or if the employer pays the insurance premiums on the employee's behalf. The value of the group term life is age banded and calculated using a table provided by the IRS that factors in an employee's age when figuring out the limits. Employer paid insurance for owners. This typically applies in an S corporation and it applies to employees who are 2% or more shareholder in that S corp. The IRS does not allow them to have pre-tax medical or dental withholdings. So it's handled by having those come out of the check post-tax, but then the employer may pay that insurance premium on the employee's behalf. If they do pay the insurance premium on behalf of the shareholder, then the amount of the insurance premium paid is reported as taxable in boxes one and 14. Auto allowances, there are several different types of those. Uh, that includes non-business use of a company car, a cash allowance or a car allowance that is given monthly to an employee related to the use of their personal car, or the employee can document business related use of their personal car and write that off at the end of the year on their own taxes. For a few general rules of thumb, typically our clients will work with their CPA or accounting department and then provide us with the taxable amounts that need to be recorded. We take that information, make sure that it is inputted into the W-2 in the correct buckets and tax appropriately. For fringe benefits, it's common practice to actively withhold FICA or Medicare and let the employees handle that when they file in the spring. Uh, some employers will gross up the fringe benefits and some of the employees pay FICA or Medicare out of their normal pay. Moving on to bonus payroll, there's several types of those as well. We see shareholder distributions, holiday bonuses, gift cards, which we talked about as a fringe benefit, and that may be a Visa prepaid card or something along those lines, and then performance bonuses as well. When you contact us for a bonus payroll, there are several questions that we're going to ask. Uh, we have a checklist to go through to make sure that we are capturing all the information correctly. And this includes how are we going to enter the bonus pay? Is that going to be done by the employer? Uh, 
inputting straight into the pay grid? Is it gonna be part of an import? If it is part of an import, please include the employee number on the import. Are you gonna schedule it with a regular payroll run or is it gonna be an off schedule run? How will the employees be paid their bonuses? Some employers like to hand physically hand a check to their employees and that may be different than the standard direct deposit that may be set up. Also, who will cover the taxes on the employee bonuses? Is it the flat rate or are the standard taxes and withholdings gonna come out of that? And also, any other deductions, 401k or any other voluntary deductions the employee may have. And then finally, if the employer is using ESS and employees can log in and see their check stubs ahead of the pay date, we need to know if you want to hide that in case you want this to be a surprise. So that is part of what we're going to need. For more information, you can uh, see our year-end guide and FAQs on the Help Center. Uh, you can go straight to our regular website and it is under Resources. There is also the checklist for bonus payrolls and there is also one for fringe benefits that should cover the questions that we're going to ask if you want to see that ahead of time. Thank you very much.